and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning's text goes through a lot of different things, right? We have um, don't judge to don't throw the, your pearls or the holy things before dogs and swine to ask, knock, ask, knock, what's the third one? Yes. Seek. Seek. <laughs> ask, seek, knock <laughs> to the golden rule to Narrow gate, yeah, I was like, Ooh, what is that? To the gates, to which road do we take to the houses being built, right? And everyone was amazed at his teaching because Jesus taught not as the scribes, but as one who had authority. So here we have Jesus saying, right, I'm sure you've all heard somebody say at some point in time, the Bible says don't judge. Have you heard that? This means yes. This means, right? We've heard that people say, you're not supposed to judge because the Bible says you should not judge. After my, my second really cool children's sermon, I, I'm going to show you these two boomerangs, right? You have to tell me which one's bigger. So which one's bigger? Which one's bigger? Stop it! Which one's bigger? Now which one's bigger? Right? Right? We judge by what we see or what we perceive, right? We judge by what we think we know, right? Because when you look at these, one of them looks bigger than the other one, right? And when I move them, the bigger one changes. But as all of you already know, and you spoil it before I even do anything, they're the same size, right? Because we judge by what we perceive. We think we know, or what's happening around us, right? But the, in actuality, does the Bible actually say, do not judge? No, the Bible says, don't judge unless you're ready to be judged by that same measure by which you are judging, right? So it doesn't say not to judge somebody, but it says, when you judge somebody, make sure that you yourself are ready to have that same judgment brought back on you. And how many of us are really ready for that anyhow? Right? Because Jesus spends his time talking about us seeing something wrong with somebody else's life. When we have something wrong with our own, we need to remove what is in our own lives first before we can help someone else take out the little thing that's wrong in their life. Right? I heard a, a professor from Luther Seminary say this week that um, the law is best applied to ourselves. Think about that for just a, a lifetime. The law, meaning the Ten Commandments and everything that Jesus tells us we're supposed to do, is best applied to ourselves. If we use that to help us get our own lives around and our own lives straightened out, we're, we're not going to have the, the, the log in our own eye. Right? We're going to use it to get us ourselves straightened out. Because in, in actuality, when you, say, when you say Jesus says don't judge, meaning we can't tell anybody they're doing something wrong, is incorrect. Because this part comes in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount when he's been telling people about what they, how they need to live their lives. So if we say we're not allowed to judge, then we can't make any judgmental decisions at all. Ever. Every one of you have made at least 30 this morning. You gotta decide whether or not you're gonna get out of bed. That's a judgment call. You gotta decide what you're gonna put on. That's another judgment call. You gotta decide if you're gonna eat something for well, some of you don't have a choice on whether or not you get out of bed. But if you, you gotta decide if you're gonna put yeah, right? Did you have a choice if you got out of bed? No, mom said get up. Um, you gotta decide what you're gonna eat for breakfast. You have to decide if you're actually gonna come when you look outside and you see it's snowing. Not that it's bad yet this morning, but these are all judgment calls that you make every day. And if we aren't supposed to judge someone else, how can we help them understand how God loves them, right? If you can't look at somebody and say, I know something that would help make your life better, but I can't tell you about it because I'm not allowed to judge you where you're at, right? Does that make sense? It's not that we're not supposed to judge. 
is that we're supposed to have ourselves straightened out and around first before we tell someone else what is wrong with them. And how many of us are completely perfect the way that we are? I'm going to put my hands in my pocket to make sure that there's no chance of anybody thinking that I have my hand up, right? Right, none of us are, right? But that's what we take. We take this as being something that we're supposed to not do. We're not supposed to judge anybody else. But if we can't help people see what's better for their lives, then there's no way for us to help them understand who Jesus is. And as I sat and listened to Kim read this this morning, I thought about another thing that I heard or read this past week. This, this statement on judgment is not about judging someone for being wrong. It's really eternally about condemning someone to not be with God forever. And who amongst us has the ability to say, you will never be able to be with God? Anybody? See, it's not about saying that somebody's doing something wrong. Because I just said that a few seconds ago, right? If we can't tell someone that something in their life is maybe a little bit messed up, and, and we can help them correct that. Like, we all know people who have issues, and there's some issues that maybe we can help with. But if we can't tell them about those issues, then how are we supposed to help them correct them? And it may not necessarily be a bad thing. It may just be something that's going on in their lives that they're struggling with. But if we can't help them with that, how are we supposed to do that? This is talking about telling someone that they are eternally and forever not able to be with God. And that's what the rest of the text actually goes on to talk about, right? You see the, do not give what is holy to dogs or throw pearls before swine. How many of you does that make sense? What the heck does that mean? To give something holy to the dogs or throw pearls before swine. What does that even mean? And why is it even in here? I mean, what are you talking about, Jesus? Give me a little bit more, Right? If you take this in context with everything that's come before, it's starting at chapter 5, which is the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, what Jesus is basically saying is don't take what is happening in your life and throw it before somebody else before you yourself have your own life figured out so that you can actually tell them what it is that, you, that needs to happen. Right? It's the same thing with judging. It's about doing something before it actually should be done. If you understand what's happening, you're not going to give what's holy to the dog, and you're not going to throw your sw the pearls before the swine. You're going to help the swine and the dog understand what it is that's going on and how things need to be. Right? And he continues to go on. And this is the one that I have problems with, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but ask, seek, and knock. Right? In Matthew it says, ask. If you want something, ask for it. If you're looking for something, seek it. And if you knock, the door will be opened. Right? It's like God is a, is a cosmic vending machine that will give you whatever you ask for. And that's not what happens, right? If you take this in the context of people that are searching for God, don't judge them for where they're at because they don't know yet. And don't give them what they don't understand yet because all they're going to do is trample it or devour it in a way that it's not supposed to be. And, and, and don't... It's not don't there. It's the let them ask and seek and not. Because if they are actually seeking after or asking about God, and if they're opening doors that are going to lead them to God, God's always going to do that for them, right? And you may be one of those doors, or you may answer one of those questions, or you may be one of those things that they seek after, because that's what God is leading us all to do, right? Which leads to the golden rule. Did you catch that this morning? In everything do to others as you would have them do to you. And this is the law in the prophets. Can any confirmation student tell me what that means? Anyone that I've confirmed before, tell me what that means. And here is the law and the prophets. When Jesus says that, and he says it a few times throughout the, throughout the Bible, he means one thing. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. And this is the law and the prophets. Means, this is what the Old Testament says. The law is the first five books of the, of, the, of the Hebrew scriptures. And the prophets is the major section that talks about what God did to help his people know that the Messiah was coming. 
So when Jesus says, in this lies the law and the prophets, he means this is the sum of the Old Testament. So do to others as you would have them do to you is the sum of the Old Testament. The other place that Jesus says this is, there's two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. And the second is like the first, love your neighbor as yourself. Right? So don't judge people by what they're doing wrong, but judge people by where their lives are at with God and help them see how much God can have an impact in their life and help them to see that God loves them where they're at and will take them the rest of the way. Right? Because like my, my trick here, when God looks at all of us where not one of us is bigger or better than the other, we're all exactly the same in the eyes of God. We are all exactly the same in the eyes of God. So know that God loves you. And know that God calls you. And just like we told the kids up here at the beginning, and we sang the song, God wants you to build your life on the solid rock that is... Say it louder. Jesus. Right. Build your life on Jesus. And know that no matter what happens, the rains or the floods or any storm or anything that comes, that God is always going to be there for you. And he's always going to help you through. And he will be your rock so that you can help others know that the, he can be theirs as well.